Hey everybody, it's the Ionic guy again. And behind me is my Ionic 5. And it's a beautiful day here in Connecticut. And I figured let's do a video on the uh, Hyundai Blue Link app and see just what it's capable of. So let's get right into it. So I'm using a Pixel 6 on the latest version of Android and the Hyundai Blue Link app is the latest update. So everything's as fresh as can be. So here in the app, you can see right at the top, there's my Ionic 5 SEL. It says refreshed four minutes ago. So there's a couple ways that you can refresh this page. Unfortunately, it just doesn't auto refresh. You can either click on the button and it'll take a few seconds to get the vehicle status. It says it can take upwards of one minute. So now you can see refreshed one minute ago. The other thing you can do here is you can pull down to refresh. And that does the exact same thing. I typically pull down. I think it's more intuitive than pressing the button. So now we have the latest information on the car. We can see the doors are locked, the battery is at 70%, and my estimated range is 180 miles. Now you can see I could start charging the car by pressing that button, but the car's not plugged in, so I can't do that. I'm in the middle of my backyard. So if I click Start Charging Now, it'll probably give me an error message. Start Charge Requested. Start Charge Request has been sent to Vehicle not received because your vehicle is unplugged. So it's smart enough to know that the car is unplugged. So now we can check vehicle status by pressing the view vehicle status button. And this is where you're gonna see a lot of the information about the car that you might be interested in. Like, is the car on? Is battery preconditioning going? Which isn't preconditioning for DC fast charging. This is just preconditioning in the morning before you get in the car and drive to work or whatever. Hoods closed, parking brakes engaged, climate controls, doors, trunk. So you can refresh it from this page again. You can't pull down to refresh here though, but you can press the button. Now there's also a full list, which gives you some more information. You can see here it says smart key battery is working. so. No issues with the key fob. And from here we can view charge management, which is something that you're definitely going to be interested in. So under the charge management tab, you have a few options here. You can see your current charge level. You can start and stop charging. You can find charging stations around you. So here you can activate some uh, alerts. So if you're charging at a public station or something and you want to be able to have time to walk back to your car to unplug it to allow somebody else to charge, you can say, tell me 10, 20, 30 minutes before my charge is finished to give me time to get back to my car to unplug. So that's kind of a nifty feature. I haven't used any public charging stations at like restaurants or, or venues or anything, so it's not really needed for me on a day-to-day -day basis, but... For people who public charge a lot, that's a nice feature to have. And here you can set your charge level limits. Now I like that you can do this on the fly because say you're inside and you had it set to 100% from a road trip or something you took the day prior. And you remember, oh, I only want to charge to 80%. Instead of going out to the car to do this, you can do it right from the app, which is really nifty. And there's a couple options here. If you don't want to choose these yourself, you can optimize for longer driving range, which just sets AC and DC charge limits to 100%, or optimize for battery longevity. So 80% is what's recommended there. Now under scheduling at the top, this is where you can get really creative with how the car prepares for you on a daily basis. So charge schedule A. Here you can set a departure time. So typically I leave around 5.30 in the morning for work. You can see I can have the days that it's gonna do it as Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And then down here, well, you can also have a separate charge schedule 
which is nifty. But down here is where it gets interesting. So down here, you can activate the climate on start. So when you tell the car, my departure time is 5.30 in the morning and it starts up, it'll turn on and set the cabin temperature to 72 degrees. That's what I have it set to. And if it's the winter time, you can have it turn on the front defroster. So this is separate from remote starting the car from the main screen of the app. This is when you have it scheduled to start on a daily basis. Then it will precondition the cabin. So down here, save on your energy bill when you set your vehicle to charge at off-peak times when electricity rates are reduced. This doesn't apply to me here in Connecticut. We don't have time of use fees for electricity. So you can select off-peak charging if you live in a state where this happens. I know California is the big one. So you can set a schedule, say your off-peak starts at 8 p.m., stop off peak at 8 a.m. And you can prioritize charging for off peak hours or you can charge only during off peak hours. So for those of you who live in states with peak rates, this could be useful for you. I think some chargers have the ability to set on and off peak charging schedules. Um, I haven't even looked into if my charge point home flex has that, but Maybe it exists in the charger itself. So going back to the main screen, if you hold down on the image of your car, you have some quick commands. You can start charging, you can locate the vehicle, you can lock the doors, or you can return to the dashboard. So I'm not gonna show you guys how to locate the vehicle. That's pretty self-explanatory. You press the button, it drops a pin where the car is located. Now, these are probably gonna be your most used portions of the app. So you can lock, unlock, remote climate start, and if you scroll back and forth here, you get some more options. You can stop climate, you can flash the lights, and you can flash the horn and lights. So let's uh, flash the lights and see what that looks like. Flash lights requested. I've never tried this before, so. There you go. Flashes the lights. I don't know how long it's gonna do this for though. The app doesn't really tell you, so, okay. So that was maybe 30 seconds of light flashing. So if you're trying to find your car in a parking lot, that's a nice feature to have. I'm not gonna do the horn and lights cause I don't need the horn blaring in the neighborhood right now, but, um. Climate start and climate stop. So if you click on climate start, you have some options here. I have a setting for summer, winter, snow. So summer, I have it just cool down the cabin to 70 degrees. In the winter, I have it warm up to 70 degrees. And if it's a snowy day, if I'm parked at the office, I have it turn on all the defrosters as well as heat up the cabin. So it's a summer day. Let's go ahead and climate start today. So we should be able to hear the compressor kick on once it processes the request. You can see the front louvers just opened up and then immediately shut and then opened again. <laughs> Not sure why it did that. And so the AC system's kicking on now. So it says climate start complete. So let's go ahead and stop the climate just by pressing that button. Climate stop requested. And I just heard the compressor kick off. So there go the front flaps, all set. You can see it's fairly responsive. I think it's been getting better with time and software updates. When I first got the car, it seemed like these actions would take forever to the point where I would rather just go out to the car and start it by hand in the morning. <laughs> so you can also view remote actions history, which is kind of nice. You can see when the lights came on, the climate start and the climate stopped. So down here you can view your driving score, which Hyundai bases on a few different factors like acceleration, braking. Okay. 
So my driving score is 69. Elon Musk would be thrilled. Um, I don't use this for anything. I think you can tie this to some insurance companies similar to, I did something with my insurance company, Progressive, where I connected my phone to their app, you know, tracked my driving behavior for, I think, a month, and then they gave me a discount on my auto insurance based on that. So I think this is similar to that, but through Hyundai, you can view the details. I'm not going to get into that, but it's there. Valley mode. Let's view valley mode details. So valley mode blocks valley drivers from accessing personal information, records time period, distance traveled, turned on and off via the Hyundai app. So I can't say I've ever had a car valeted, so this is not of interest to me, but if you get your car valeted a lot, I guess that could be useful for you and give you a little bit of peace of mind that they're not taking your Ionic 5 out for a joyride. So down here you got some other things, Hyundai Finance. You can, if you finance through Hyundai, you can log in here and probably pay your bill, see your statement, see your balance, all that good stuff. You can see your dealer, Mine's Key Hyundai of Manchester, schedule service, service offers, blah, blah, blah. Vehicle safeguard alerts. This is if you have a teenage child who's going to be using your car. You can set speed limit alerts, I think uh, curfews, geofencing, so if they cross a certain distance from home, it'll alert you. I don't have teenage children, but it's nice to know that the feature exists. So that about does it for the main page here. If you go to car care, you can see a diagnostic report. So here it'll just tell you if everything's running normally, if anything's wrong. I've never seen anything here because it's a brand new car. So let's just see diagnostics history and see if anything comes up for whatever reason. I don't think it will, but you never know. So, no diagnostic history for my vehicle. So in here you have a few other things. You can schedule service, find a collision repair center, offers and promotions, blah, blah, blah. None of this stuff is super interesting. Um, if we go to utilities here, um, here's where you find things like your profile, your dealer, your driving score, more Hyundai Finance, valet mode. So. This is all kind of redundant to what you find on the main home screen. So because my girlfriend also has a Hyundai EV, the Kona Electric, we can swap back and forth between both cars right here. So if you click on the cog up in the top right corner, this is gonna bring you to the app settings. So you have a few options. So you can use a pin, you can use your fingerprint, you can use face ID. You can use all of these to log into the app and to activate things like climate control and whatnot. You can change your PIN, change your password, blah, blah, blah. Locked car doors are required for remote start. By activating this feature, car doors will automatically lock during the remote start process. So you can turn that on, you can turn that off. Um, you can see down here, I'm currently connected on my Pixel 6. You can see other devices registered under your account. You can deactivate devices. And down here is where you're gonna set all your app notifications. So down here under remote, these are all the notifications that you're gonna get when you do things from the app. So you can turn these on, you can turn them off, you can get texts, emails, or app notifications. So um, engine idle alerts, I actually wanna turn those off because I had some I kept getting those when I was shooting a video a few weeks ago and they got really annoying. Head unit software update, that's a good one to have on. This is all pretty straightforward. If you've ever been to a settings page, doesn't look that different. Up in the top right, there's a Hyundai virtual assistant. So if you like a more conversational way of doing things, this Hyundai virtual assistant might be a good option for you. But yeah, that's a basic tour of the app. Um, I find it useful. I wish it were faster. Um, 
I wish it were free for the life of the car. Um, I'm not sure what it costs after the three years is up. I can't imagine it being more than a few bucks a month. I hope it's not, because if that's the case, I honestly don't know if I would continue paying for it. I know this, this video is gonna be mostly relevant to the United States, possibly Canada. I don't really know what Canada's app looks like. I know Europe and Asia, their apps look very different from the current version of our app. I don't know if you guys are light years ahead of us or light years behind us. I tend to think you're light years ahead of us. So anyway, that's gonna do it for this video. I hope you guys learned something. So obviously if the app gets updated in the future, I'll be doing videos on that and showing you guys all the new features. But as always, if you enjoyed this video, tap the like button, subscribe if you haven't already done so, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care, everybody.